It's time for us to do some entertainment conversation here and definitely if you're a Christian you know that in this season more than ever that the only dependent one is Jehovah God Almighty. He alone is God and that's a song you are God from uh, the recording artist, uh, also a poet, uh, she has uh, a record label she belongs to, you know, well structured, beautiful young one. Quindlin uh, Yagli is her name and uh, she's known as um, actually the act breaker by her friends and family. We'll get to find out why her friends and family call her act breaker but she wants us to call us Quindlin. But great to see you Quindlin. Thanks for having me. Beautiful video by all standards. Thank you. And you must be some fashionista for Christ. Oh yes, I'm a professional stylist as oh, well. Oh, I can yeah. see that in your video, you know. I'm like, <laughs> okay, you. you didn't come to play at all. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you. Your God was recorded mm -hmm. last year, in mm -hmm. May last year, so yes. it's about a year old. Um, yes, mm -hmm. it was, but then we modified it um, somewhere this year. Okay, we, okay. what did you change about it? Um, the first one was a digital recording. This is more like a live recording, so it okay. sounds a bit different, and we made a few psychopational changes in it, so we just wanted to do a live version of it. And, and I see from your CV, your profile, that you've done great work and I need to tell you that she's worked with the likes of Sonny Oposu, a man I grew up listening to. Uh, she's done work with Sonny Badu, uh, Tim Godfrey, Tim Godfrey. Mm -hmm. a lot of beautiful names that you've worked with uh, both here in Ghana, in Nigeria and mm -hmm. in the United mm -hmm. Kingdom. Yes. Tell me how that has impacted your music because I hear you say there's a live recording, it was digital live recording you know, and these people are people who you know are yeah. able to meander through all these. Yeah, to, honestly, uh, Miss G, I think my journey so far in music is something that was not a coincidence. It was definitely intentional by God. All these people you mentioned, going through them, gave me a good foundation for music. So when it comes to music, um, there are certain standards that I can't go below. Mm. You know, so mm. and it just works because you know I have people that I need to make sure they are because. There are certain names you can't say you've worked with and then you, you don't, don't show yes, so, your performance. Well, it's been great so far. It's been great so far. So uh, tell me, uh, how long did you work with Sunny Badu? Sunny Badu was a little above a year and that was in the UK when he wow. was just coming out with Baba. Mm. That was when I worked with him, just a little above a year. And at the same time I was working, I was schooling, so I couldn't be... Keeping up with long, all of them. Yes. Mm. And then Sonny Oposu and... Sonny Oposu was for three years, I think. For three years. And Tim Godfrey discovered me when I was 14. Wow. Yes. So you started, you started from the church when you were 13, as yes. the youngest in your choir. That's yes. what your profile says. Yes. And at 14, you had met Tim Godfrey. Tim Godfrey was the music director of my church at the time. And then he needed, he wanted to move out of church. He had the calling to start his own thing. So what he did was he poached his favorite singers, quote and unquote, from different places. And then we started the Extreme Crew, which is now known as Rocks Nation. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. So for a very long time, is it okay to ask how old are you all? Oh, yeah. How long have you been doing this? <laughs> okay, so from when I started with Tim Godfrey to now, that's over 20 years. Wow. Yes. 20 years? Over. Over 20 <laughs> years. That's, that's, that's a long time. But yeah. why did it take you this long to finally say, I want to be a recording artist myself? Okay, so Ms. G... It took Jesus 33 years. Right? Okay. We need to go through a process. And I think that's something that we all need to understand. They might, there might be a prophecy upon your life. There might be a calling. But there's always that middle space where God needs to separate you and teach you. So when the platform is ready for you, you don't go there and fall below standard. And so I think from that stage till now, I went through a, a process mm. of refining. And now I just believe it's, it's the right time for me to do God's work. And, and, and you've been released? Or you still would go many star with Tim Godfrey? Or oh, no, I've been released. With Tim Godfrey, um, I left when I was going to the UK, of course. Mm. With Tim Godfrey, was in Lagos. So I left when I was going to the UK. And whilst I was in the UK, I wanted to be actively in music. So then it was Sonny Badu, and I was a member of the Hillsong worship team in London mm. as well. And then when I moved to Ghana, I moved back to Ghana about 10 years ago. Wow. And when I moved back, um, I was just in a place where I just wanted to serve on the church. You know, at the moment, I'm at the Maker's House Chapel International, the East Lagoon branch, wow. and I'm still serving. Service is part of ministry, so I can't run away from that. I like the fact that you say service is part of ministry because a lot of people start from the church. Mm -hmm. What happens is that they get established and we forget where we started from. I, I, maybe people, people say, oh, yeah, she, yeah, she's now an established mm -hmm. at his now. Mm -hmm. And so she'll be saying, oh, service, service. Very soon you say, oh, I don't, get, I don't have the time. I've got too <laughs> many gigs here. I'm yeah. traveling all around yeah. and all of that. Uh, Miss G, I've done this for 20 years. Like I said, I've been groomed for 20 years. And 
I believe that no matter how far you go in life, you don't cut yourself out of the source. Not to say that you're cutting yourself away from God, but the gathering of the saints and the corporate worship is very essential for your growth. Mm. Um, of course, you would have gigs back to back. Of course, you'll get to that point where maybe you can't be there every Sunday. But just make sure wherever you are, if you're in the States, you're in London, even if you can worship with your local church in Ghana, wherever you are, if you're free on a Sunday, make sure you don't disconnect yourself from the source. So there's a conversation that's been happening over the period, the influence of your minister, the set man of your church, mm -hmm. on your craft as a gospel musician. In Ghana, I've heard a lot of musicians mm -hmm. talk about the fact that the church has not been helpful, the local ministers or the pastors mm -hmm. don't invest in you know, uh, the ministration of uh, the folks who mm -hmm. are musicians. Mm -hmm. What has it been for you, for the, for the experiences that you've had, being in Nigeria, being in the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. now experiencing Ghana? Do you think that any pastor, mm -hmm. you know, owes his ministers or mm -hmm. the musicians in his church that duty to groom them, to invest in them? Um, you see, Ms. G, I don't think investment is only monetary. Mm. The fact that you have their platforms to sharpen your skill is an investment on its own. Personally, I haven't had that experience at all. But um, I feel like sometimes as well, we need to get to a point where we try as much as possible not to have too much expectations. Because once you have too much expectations, then you're disappointed, right? For me, I have my businesses. I run my own businesses. So I'm not fully like, oh, my pastor needs to do this or my pastor needs to do that. But thankfully, I am under a governance of a pastor, Pastor Bohahiman team. She's an amazing person. She's invested in your craft. She's invested in the music. She wants to know that your spiritual life is going forward. So that has been my own experience, experience so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. now, now let's talk about You Are God. Mm -hmm. And what did it take you to do the song? Did you, because you're mm -hmm. a songwriter, mm -hmm. um, what did it take? Did you just uh, have an experience and encounter with God? Most of and I hear people say, I dreamt. Uh, some mm -hmm. people say, oh, I was in the shower and I had the rhythm and all that. Tell me what you... <laughs> 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 you haven't had that experience yet. Um, music people said they're on yeah? their closet and then they get... You know, oh, it's very possible. Mm. This morning I wrote a song on my way here in the car. Tell right. me about about it. My manager was listening to the radio and I was like, turn down, it's coming, it's coming. And so we literally, oh, once, once it we got like to, yeah, it comes, sometimes it does. Sometimes you have to deliberately sit down. Sometimes it also comes when you're worshipping. So it all depends. There's no stereotype to it. Mm. Tell me about this experience uh, that you had this morning. So how did you feel? Like you just felt some voice whispering into your Dead. ears. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think we were driving and uh -huh. I just started humming. Mm. And he was, he was listening to... Um, a preaching or something on radio and I just thought I'm humming and I said oh Andy we need to turn this down it's coming I'm getting some music so he turned it down and I just and he was like record it I said wait let me structure it <laughs> okay you know and so I, I did I sang it and then I got my phone and I recorded it so it comes in different ways most times for me it's just I'm doing something randomly and I'm not paying attention and a tune just comes and immediately it comes I know where it's going and I record on my phone I might be able I would most likely develop it fully later but it, that's how it comes for me. And mm. there are times that I also deliberately say today, I want to write about this and does compose. It, does it come when you, when you deliberately sit down and say, oh, yeah. uh, today I want to write about this? Yes. Do you get the words to fit in? Yes, I do. Mm. So with, with me, there are those songs that are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And there are those songs that you deliberately wrote. There's always a difference, though, when you look at the song. The Holy Spirit always is way more than when you deliberately want to write a song. Now, now uh, how many songs do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking because I know of you are God on record. Yes. But the way you say you get the inspiration mm -hmm. to write songs and the Holy Spirit ministers to you and yes, all of that. I'm, I'm, I'm asking, maybe you have some other songs that recorded. You know, um, mm. I, I think I have a couple of songs recorded, but they're not out. Mm. You are God is the single we have released. But as to how many songs I have in my archive, I can't count. I started writing when I was 13. So. Have you written for some people who have ministered your, 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 your lyrics? Yes, I have. I've written for a couple of people. I've written for my church, our theme songs, all those things. We just randomly be there and say, oh, so we're starting this program in church. Let's write a theme song. Mm. And in one hour, you have your theme song. Wow. So. Uh, did you charge people when you write for them? For now, no. Oh, so I can just come and say, uh, write for me a song and okay. then, you know, it's free. Well, uh, it depends on the relationship we I have. Mean, we have a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> we have a relationship. It depends on the now. relationship. So honestly, um, I haven't charged anyone, and I haven't 
seen it like, oh, I'm professionally writing. It's like maybe as friend or a ch- I won't charge, I won't charge my church to write a song or anything. So it's just one of those things. Maybe when I start thinking about it as a business, then if people approach me, then maybe my manager can deal with that. Mm. Are you looking at relocating to Nigeria or you're, you're here for good? Um, until I hear God say move, mm. if I don't, I'm here for good. You're here. Yes. What, do you, what do you hope to um, achieve in the next couple of years, you know, as a musician here? Mm-hmm. And what has been the acceptance so far? Um, acceptance has been great. I am, Ghana is also my home. So acceptance has been good. And um, I feel like when God sends you to a place, mm-hmm. or when, because honestly, I thought growing up, you know, hey, the rest of my life is in the UK. I, ha- I thought I had structures in place. I knew what my calling was. I knew where I was headed. But I thought, hey, we're in the UK, so this is it, you know. So I never even thought that God was going to bring me back to Africa, mm. you know. And I believe that when God sends you to a place, he makes provision and he brings people that will hold you up in your journey. And that's what it's been for me. The acceptance has been amazing. Um, it's just it's just what it is. We're just here to serve God. We, we're ministers of God, so that's there's no discrimination amongst us. Having had the experience with Sonia Post, I love him very much. I grew up in yeah. Nigeria, so I grew up listening to a oh, lot of Sonia Oh, which Pusha. what's Sonia your favorite Pusha. song? I want to remember. Um, uh, well, well, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure I'll get that <laughs> one. But there's a recent one mm-hmm. that you know, Jesus, okay, Jesus, Jesus, da 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 da. We we praise your name, <laughs> Baba. Yeah. For, well, for me, the recent one I like is my hands, my feet, uh-huh. my whole body. There's one I grew up listening to. I remember that one. Uh, but let me t- ask you about you know the people you are hoping to work with because mm-hmm. you've had experience with Tim, you have experience with Sami, uh, Sonny Badu, shared stages with huge names, Donny McClarkin. Is that Donny McClarkin and uh, all yeah. of those people? Yeah. You share stages with them. Mm-hmm. Are there some artists that you have in mind to work that with? Do you want to work with? Um, I think I went to an interview and they asked me the exact same question. Someone I really want to work with at the moment is MOG. Oh yes, I really want to do a song with Emoji. I actually have the song already, so I'm sure my management is going to work on that when the time comes. But um, most times, like I said, because my songs are mostly inspired by the Holy Spirit, I try as much as possible to make sure I have a lead in before I do anything. So whoever God says, let's put on the song, we'll put the person on the song. I'm just here as a servant to do God's work. I tell you where to find Emoji. Go to the Royal House Chapel. Yeah, you find him there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you find him there. Thank you very much, Thank Kindling, so much. Uh, for joining us for a conversation. Thanks, I'm Michi. sure that uh, a lot of people will begin to follow your music. I love this one. You're good. Thank and you. I hope that Ghanaians will buy into it. It's on YouTube, right? They yes, can, it they is, can it go is find on it on YouTube, YouTube yes. and download and share with your friends and family. Thank you so much. Thanks for and having me. I wish you the best. When, when you're the biggest star, mm. remember that TV3 is here. I'll come you. you. come. Yeah. We'll have coffee together. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you very much. Uh, and that's uh, Kindling speaking to us about her new track. Uh,